we said, this is not going to be a good day. A fatal chain reaction accident on I-95 with multiple injuries and entrapment. What became very clear was the sheer number of emergency vehicles that were going in that direction. That was a, a, a pretty gruesome sight. I'd never seen anything like this one before. She was asking me where I was. I'm under a semi. She said, well, how should I get out? Any way that you can at this point. From the Weather Channel, this is Storm Stories with meteorologist Jim Cantori. Midwestern winters are notoriously punishing. Freezing rain, heavy snow, bitter cold. Evidence of these brutal conditions comes early in 2009 when moisture from the Gulf of Mexico collides with an Arctic high pressure system and cripples the region for several days in late January. An ice storm paralyzes Kentucky, knocking out power for weeks. Most of neighboring Indiana escapes the ice, but not the precipitation. A massive snowfall blankets the state. I think if you look at the statistics, you say, well, that's not a bad snow season in Indianapolis. It only ran maybe a couple of inches above average. Chuck Lofton has been forecasting weather for greater Indianapolis for 25 years. But what was unique about this particular winter was the bad weather came in clusters. The end of January, you had about a foot of snow on the ground and then several days of melting. And that led up to the day of the accident. The accident? 35 vehicles strewn across one of the busiest highways in Indiana. It will be the biggest pileup in state history. This was a gigantic mess. I'd never seen anything like this one before. That was a first. It was a first to see something that big. It was chaotic. February 3rd, the day starts out looking like just another blustery winter morning. This is Channel 13 Eyewitness News Sunrise. Thanks for joining us. 21 degrees right now. Not too bad out there. Chilly, but we're calm. Chuck Lofton joins us with a look at maybe a little bit of snow, but it doesn't look like too bad. No, not a lot of snow. About an inch or two. One or two inches of snow. Nothing compared to the previous week. But barely two hours later, Chuck's outlook changes dramatically. Large area of snow started moving in from the west. I thought, we've got a problem here. The snow was increasing both in intensity and in the area of coverage. So this was more than an inch or two of snow. This was double that. It seems like when it snows or rains, we're busy. So if you like to be busy, you like bad weather. Firefighter Scott Zellhart and his colleagues work out of Station 94 in Fishers, Indiana, a northeastern Indianapolis suburb along Interstate 69. A call for a serious accident with an inverted vehicle came out on the interstate. Our dispatcher added us on it. The temperature is 11 degrees, well below freezing. The snow melt from last week's storm is now refreezing into a layer of slick black ice. A disaster for speeding drivers. Just ask Chuck Lofton's colleague, reporter Chris Prophet. Even when it snows, I think people think I'm, I'm invincible. Running past others and you know, we always say to ourselves, we'll be doing that story next. Impatient drivers and icy roads are an especially deadly combination in this metro area. Because of the geographic location of Indianapolis, we get an awful lot of truck traffic. Trucks do not stop as quickly on slick roads. But the cars are still traveling just as quick as if they were behind a car. And so, that combination means that you can have some real problems. Already this morning, reporter Chris Prophet and his cameraman are covering a car accident. It's one of many traffic calls being fielded by area police and fire departments. We sort of knew just by listening to scanner traffic, radio scanner traffic, that it was a bad morning. We go out on the interstate, and we saw accidents one after the other. So myself and two other troopers were working, help direct traffic. We said, this is not going to be a good day. 
Out on the interstate, wary drivers like Tammy Kelly are taking their commute seriously. Tammy leaves her home in Fort Wayne, Indiana this morning to attend a job training course in Indianapolis. I was paying attention to the fact that it was snowing. I called my manager and I told her that I was gonna take my time. Tammy's attentive driving isn't reserved for snow and ice. My family has said that I have nine lives and I've used several. I've been in serious accidents previously. Um, actually, several very serious accidents where I was not hurt. I'm very accustomed to really keeping my eyes on what's going on with other vehicles. But as snow continues to blanket I-69, this grows more challenging. It was like driving in a dense fog. Just a few miles ahead of Tammy, Arlene O'Keefe navigates her Ford Taurus through the flakes. Like Tammy, Arlene lives in Fort Wayne, Indiana, a hundred miles away. But today she is headed to Illinois on business and driving in near whiteout conditions. The wind just blew that snow around where you couldn't see anything. Pushing through the wall of snow is Fisher's Fire Engine 94, whose crew is responding to an overturned vehicle. It was really slick and we kept coming across cars. Well, here's a car in the ditch. Nope, that's not our car. Then we go to the next one. Yeah, that's not our car. It's like we were driving into a wall of white. Everybody in the truck made the comment, man, these people are not slowing down. The fire truck comes upon yet another overturned vehicle, but this one matches the dispatcher's description. Yeah, we finally found it. So I went to push the button on the radio to tell the dispatcher I'm on the scene. Engine 94. Show me in service and we're trying to slow down, slow down, slow down. We pull over to the shoulder. People weren't stopping. And we get hit by something. It knocked us forward a bunch, and I keyed up the radio to tell dispatch that, hey, not only did we find the wreck, but we are in the wreck. Challenge 94, we've been struck by a vehicle. And I see a flash out of the corner of my right eye, and there's a semi really close to our truck. Got hit a second and third time. Control engine 94, we've been struck a second time. All 94 companies are remaining in the truck, belted in. And I can promise you there were some words that if they came out on tape right now, would have to definitely be edited. I-69 is now an ice rink whose skaters are moving at 70 miles an hour. The vehicles that slam into engine 94 sprawl across both lanes, and the ensuing traffic cannot slow down fast enough. A chain reaction of accidents begins, but the surrounding snow is so thick, drivers have no idea of the danger. A semi-truck behind me passed me. He went back into the right lane in front of me and, and immediately braked. And then I see the truck in front of me jackknife. It was completely across the interstate, like from all the way from the end of one lane to the other and beyond that. And that's when I start hearing crashing and banging and screeching. I remember thinking, I wonder if there's a place to pull off. At that point, just very white and blowing really hard. I just like real quickly glanced to the left. There were crash cars on the left. So I shifted my gaze over to the right and it was worse. Can't go left, can't go right. My next thought was I'm by myself in the car. I don't want to run into anybody else. I would only hurt me if, if anybody, and I'm not going to hurt the um, trailer. So I made a decision to just hit the trailer. A massive pileup has begun on snow-choked I-69. With a jackknife semi blocking both lanes before her, driver Tammy Kelly is about to become part of it. Head-ons are nearly always fatal, and I think that was one of the last thoughts that I had was I definitely don't want to hit head-on, so I just slammed on my brakes and turned so I would go in sideways. And it's like slow motion. I held on to my steering wheel, realizing that there would be an impact, and I laid as far as I could across the passenger seat. 
And the next thing I know, the underneath of the semi was right above my head. Just yards away from Tammy, driver Arlene O'Keefe is faced with her own split second decision. I'm still trying to stop and it's, I realize that that's not gonna happen. My father would always tell me if you ever got into a bad situation, choose the snow over the ice. You have some control of snow, but you have no control of ice. Arlene makes for the snowbank along the road's shoulder. I take a turn to the right, and when my tires hit the snow, I did a sharp turn to the right and slammed on the brakes and let my car get stuck in the snow and keep away from the other cars that were already in the ditch. Arlene's Ford Taurus spins 180 degrees before coming to a rest. And when I came to stop, yes, I did thank God. And then my hands started shaking. 200 feet away, four firefighters from Engine 94 in Fishers, Indiana, sit at the head of the pileup. Their fire truck is hit three times. There's two of us that ride backwards, and we were both kind of given a play-by-play -play description. They would hear, oh, here comes another one. Here comes another one. So we sat there for, I think it was a 20 or a 30 count, and basically waited for the train wreck behind us to quit. Got out and looked and went, wow, this is a lot worse than I thought it's going to be. The wreckage covers an area about as long as a football field. Near the front, two men, friends driving together to work, lay dead after their truck slides under a semi. Firefighter Kelly Elder, a paramedic, rushes to assist a man trapped in between two semis in what had been his Ford Explorer. I didn't even know what kind of vehicle it was. I had to ask somebody. It didn't look good for that person. That was a pretty gruesome sight. Where we were working to remove him from was about where the gas filler cap is. The trapped driver will survive, but it takes 80 minutes to free him. Unaware of the pileup just a few miles away, reporter Chris Prophet and his cameraman are also out on I-69, filming a woman whose car slid into a guardrail. Suddenly, the emergency personnel that were there to help her were gone. And I thought, well, where are they going? She's still here. Well, we found out where they were going. Chris and his cameraman are quick to follow. What became very clear was the sheer number of emergency vehicles that were going in that direction. The problem was they were going northbound and southbound lanes. So you know that something's going on. That means the interstate has been shut down. By no means did I grasp how big that was until I finally got there, got out of the car, and saw what I saw. Our live truck couldn't get in. I remember using my cell phone and taking images, just scanning sort of the length of this and sending it back to the station. There were multiple injuries. It's believed that the accident was caused by a combination of the weather, the horrible weather we have right now, and people driving simply too fast. I had people running at me, literally running at me, going, that person's bad, that person's really bad. Well, I remember one young lady, she had just really recently started driving. And so this was her first accident, and it was a major accident, and she was in a lot of shock. There was a lady underneath the trailer, the truck that just passed me. Her car was stuck underneath the trailer, and she was trapped. That woman is Tammy Kelly, who amazingly is conscious and trying to get her bearings. I don't know that I was unconscious for a few seconds, or maybe God made it so that that wouldn't be anything that I would remember. Um, but I heard the voice of the OnStar lady, and that was the first human voice that I heard, and she was asking me where I was. I have the 911 center on the line. Go ahead. I'm standing, I'm under a semi on I-69. The jackknife semi peels back the roof of Tammy's Saturn Aura as she drives under it. Glass showers the pavement. And it was cold, cold, cold. Snow was kind of coming in under the semi and a little bit into my car because I was like I had a convertible at that point. Yet astonishingly, Tammy is not in much pain. I 
was still holding on really tight to the steering wheel, and so I had a cut on my wrist that was bleeding, but I wasn't concerned with that so much as it's 11 degrees. Tammy's leg is pinned under the steering wheel, and the passenger seat is covered in glass and twisted metal. But propped on her elbows, she manages to find her cell phone. My husband had a meeting at 9, so he's probably still in his meeting. So instead of calling my husband, I called my boss. And I think I, a couple of times in a row, said, um, I'm OK, I'm OK. For the next hour, Tammy waits for emergency crews to slog their way back to her car at the rear of the pileup. But the weather makes the rescuer's job extremely difficult. Traction wasn't that great uh, going through, and then some of the snow was really deep. It was real hard to move around because there were so many, either you had to climb over or duck under. There was antifreeze flowing out of a truck, so you had to be careful that you didn't step in stuff, and it was slick. We saw people slipping and falling. And I see a lot of people walking around crying, and people hurt, and people still in their vehicles trapped and pinned. And it was just a horrific sign of things that were there. It's really kind of undescribable. By the time firefighter Scott Zellhart reaches Tammy's car, he thinks he's already too late. Got underneath the semi where it was at uh, and started to talk. And the person didn't answer me and talked again. and went to reach in with my arm. And this lady said, I'm OK. Can you get me out of here? I want to get out. And it scared me because I really didn't expect her to talk to me. I didn't think that she was with us. I could hear him problem solving. Let's try letting the air out of the tires. And then they were talking about losing power. You want to remove the wreckage from around the person, not the person from around the wreckage. We had to use what we call hydraulic spreaders to try and get the door open. And basically, bends and moves metal. I just heard like really loud creaking. I could figure they were opening the door. She was really worried about her car. I said, ma'am, I'm going to cut your seatbelt so we can get you out of here. And she said, don't do that. And I said, honey, I think you've met the deductible. It's OK. And they asked me if I could get out that way. She said, well, how should I get out? Any way that you can at this point. Her car is totaled, yet Tammy Kelly is about to walk away from a 35-car pileup. I just finally got my legs out and did kind of the limbo to get out from under that railing. Then they, they took my arms, and um, I reassured them that I could stand up. Tammy is fortunate. Two young men are killed. A third driver is in critical condition. A fatal chain reaction accident on I-69 with multiple injuries and entrapment. I'm Chris Proffitt. I'll have that story coming up. Were you almost overwhelmed here early on? Uh, not almost. We were overwhelmed from the beginning. That's just the nature of the beast. Um, we had initial response crews getting here, but we got some bad weather. Uh, we got a call in mutual aid from the surrounding departments, and it just takes a little longer to get here in snow. It's frigid in northeastern Indianapolis this morning, yet emergency personnel aren't feeling the cold. I don't remember the cold a, a whole lot. Um, it, it was there, I'm sure, but it's not something we were focused on at the time. It just didn't register. I lost total dimension of time. You're operating on adrenaline, and I think that's what happened that day. I think there was a lot of that going on. But this pileup is not the day's only storm story. You're so wrapped in your moment of trying to cover what you're doing that I didn't realize that for the north on I-69, there was another pretty sizable accident. 20 miles north, another pileup on I-69 involving 27 vehicles. More than an inch of snow per hour is falling on northeastern Indiana this morning much faster than snow plows can clear it. Because of the amount of space that each truck has to travel, the mileage, they get one shot at plowing one particular area per three hour time. And so there was no way. There's no way that you could keep up with that. 
before it lets up nearly four inches of snow and three more accidents plug area roads. I mean, this is really tragic. And this happens all the time in the Midwest in the winter. Out on I-69, tow trucks wait to haul 35 vehicles away from the scene of the largest pileup in Indiana history. But before the day is out, the highway is cleared, the sun begins shining, and though it tragically took two lives, many feel grateful the accident wasn't worse. It was very fortunate where it occurred. Uh, there is a new emergency room hospital located just up the road within a couple miles. There is no question that retaining cable on the side of Interstate 69 saved lives because it kept the cars from moving to the opposing lane of traffic. I just thank God that, uh, you know, there were more fatalities out here. For the Weather Channel, I'm meteorologist Jim Cantori. Your local forecast is next.